Joe are kicking off another week. But we actually have a bit of an announcement, don't we? Yeah, we've got something uh something big for the podcast coming up next week. Bigger than average. Yeah. Um, which is not something we can normally complain, we can normally boast about. So <laughs> we're pretty excited about this. Yes, we don't usually boast about our size, but next week is actually going to be the biggest week for this show that we've actually done. Now we've we've done two episode weeks pretty consistently here. Yeah. We've had a few uh few weeks where we're like, you know what? Content was so good. And instead of doing a side stitch, we're just gonna do a full episode out of this. Yeah. But this this one next week, we take it, dare I say, up another notch. Yes. Yeah. We, take we it, go full emerald. <laughs> we, we take it across the galaxy and we're covering one of our favorite properties, the Firefly property, which would end up spawning the Serenity movie and some pretty fun comics. Yeah, the comics are fun. I don't know. Does it ever get a video game? I don't think it got a video no, game. I got a canceled Maybe got a video, video game. game. Canceled video game. <laughs> but uh, tell you what, here is the announcement. We're going to be doing three full episodes next week, mm-hmm. and each one is going to invite one of our friends who love either Firefly or Serenity. Uh, We're going to be joined by the Sudden But Inevitable Rewatch podcast Mm -hmm. with their friends Jesse and Ricky D of Best Flicks with Ricky D. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then uh, we'll be joined uh, by your friends from Measuring the Score, uh, Chris and Leslie Lott, to talk about the uh, music and the score of both the series and the movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be wrapping up the week with our friend Sean, from Cheap Seat Reviews, we'll be covering the movie Serenity, as well as the lasting impact of, of the property on pop culture. Mm-hmm. So, folks, we are really excited to bring this to you. Once again, three full episodes are going to be dropping during that week. So, obviously, not this week, of course. We've still got some fun content for you. Absolutely. So, either clear your schedule or find stuff to do that you'd like to have us, like, you know, talking to you throughout the day with. <laughs> yes. So, either busy yourself or, or do nothing. Yeah, yeah. Or just do what you normally do. Yeah, do what you normally do when you listen to us. Yeah, listen to us more. But tell you what, it's coming, folks. So there's going to be roughly about, geez, four and a half, five hours worth of content. Oh, to easily. To. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So clear that schedule. If you've got a desk and there's papers on it, you just wipe all of that off of that desk, dramatic fashion. Dramatic fashion, and then realize that it was completely unnecessary. <laughs> yes. And you just plug us into your ears. Maybe go for a walk, or Absolutely. you pick up that mess you just made. Well, listen to us talk about Firefly with uh, five really cool people. Yeah, it was a fun week. We hope you guys enjoy it as well. But once again, it's coming. It is coming quick. But hey, this week, we're actually talking about anti-heroes. Mm-hmm. And in our main series later this week, we're actually going to be talking you know, much more about the literary influences as well as some of the you know comic book properties yeah. that we really yeah. were attached to. Lots of reading uh, was, was done. <laughs> for those for that episode to prepare for it not like super crazy research like no these are just things that we've read before yeah sort of things if there's one thing i hate more Mm -hmm. than water chestnuts it is having to read oh man like you really hated it i mean i know i know when like i was i i liked it that's because i used to get coupons for like personal pan pizzas from pizza hut but when that program died when read it was done (sighs) there was no point in going on with reading Mm-mm. Most of us early teens were just questioning life in general at that point in time. <laughs> but tell you what, we don't always have time to cover everything on this show. And that's very clear in the topic mm-hmm. of antiheroes. But what we wanted to do was pull back the curtain a little bit and mm-hmm. talk about some of our favorite film based yeah. antiheroes. Because, yeah, we don't really, really go into the films no. uh, at all. In There's the no time. Episode. There was no time at all. There's absolutely no, no time. So we're happy to once again bring you this this mm-hmm. live conversation between joe and i as opposed to our normal setup which is yeah. halfway across the state mm-hmm. so yeah we are still coming to you live not live live-ish. formally live live ish yeah. from mark's basement yeah. at the same time mark's usually down here <laughs> yeah. but i'm down here this time too i'm usually hiding down here yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but tell you what getting into our our film you know favorite anti-heroes mm-hmm. you know I, I knew right away that at least the one person that comments on this show would probably go, why don't you talk about Han Solo? Yeah. He shot first. He did. As much as you want to edit and make new cuts and versions, we know he shot first. Oh. And that's kind of why we like him so much. <laughs> Honestly, he was he was always my favorite character. Mm-hmm. You know, back when everybody else was, you know, pining for being a Jedi or, oh, yeah. you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I was the guy going, no, I want, like, knee-high boots and, and a vest. And a walking carpet. 
Yeah. 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 With a bandolier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I loved Han Solo. I mean, I think for me, it was because the swashbuckler was just kind of cool in general. But then yeah. I realized just how much I hated doing things when people asked me to do them. Yeah. Like you probably would have done them. But it's the fact that someone asked you to do it, it's like, no, no, I'm not interested anymore. I'm no. out. No, it's like when your mom asked you to take the trash out, but you're going to do it anyway. Yeah, it was starting to smell. You realized it. You're going to do something about it. But then when mom complains and says something, you know what? No, no, no. Nope. I was going to do it, but now I'm going to wait harder. Yeah, because I'm going to make myself put up with it because I know you're annoyed by it even more than I am. <laughs> your annoyance is my motivator, mm -hmm. which is basically Han Solo in a nutshell, right? Yeah, completely. Yeah. Uh, that's why everything's fine here. Like uh, Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, how, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Han Solo is interesting though because um, he definitely has the anti-hero vibe mm -hmm. to start Star Wars. Oh yeah, you know he's only motivated by his own dealings, right? Yeah, money. Yeah, he owes Jabba the Hutt uh, big time. Yeah, he we don't know what for. Deal. No, we do know. Do we what know for. what for? What happened? Like we absolutely know what for. So he had uh, basically he had his like you know his his uh, the Millennium Falcon as he says. Oh, the Falcon, yes. And so he was carrying a shipment that was... Oh, know, yeah, he didn't ditch it. That's right, yeah. He ditched the page. He ditched it because yeah, he ditched there was it. an Imperial... Yes, like, the patrol. first sight yeah. of the Imperial ship, and he drops the Just payload. came right back to me. There's what it is. Yeah. Okay, I get it. I, yeah. remember, I remember now. Just, yeah, yeah. You can't blame the guy. Well, I mean, you could if you... I guess if you paid him and use you your stuff. Him. Yeah. Maybe a little blame. <laughs> which, Maybe a little. Which, un up until the um, the extended version of A New Hope, mm -hmm. we didn't have the full context of this, yeah. right? Not until we had the the scene where he actually talks to Jabba and mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're they're talking on Tatooine and he, you know, he mentions this full scenario. Yeah. And yeah. Right around the, that sweet, sweet rock technology that oh. came in in that movie. Yes, the brilliant rock technology. Yes. And then that extra glimpse of Boba Fett that we get that still means nothing for him <laughs> in the original nothing, trilogy. Nothing at all. Yeah. Which I guess, like, he's not an anti-hero with Boba Fett. He's he's just an asshole. Well, how could you say he's an anti-hero when there's really nothing that really happens with him? Yeah, I guess that was my biggest gripe for him, too, is uh, originally when people, my friends would say, oh, Boba Fett's such a badass. Who wouldn't remember Batman? I'm like, I'm pretty sure a child could beat Boba Fett. Oh, without yeah. trying oh yeah yeah it, completely it, it, his his mm -hmm. like anti-hero turn didn't even happen until we got thick fat in the Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. that was the first time he became a badass yeah and i'm sorry if i was supposed to read all of the books and all of the comics after the movies were made yeah. to see that he's a badass character then he's a bad character yeah yeah he well, was but, but I mean, now i take it back yeah, yeah both, now both, he's a badass both it's thick that means got that mm -hmm. staff that he was kicking ass with daddy fat man yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah dude oh yeah but hey back to han solo so he ditches that <laughs> <laughs> he ditches yes. that cargo yes job is very mad about it and that brings us to uh yeah well, uh well but it's most easily well but for him though like han solo definitely has the <laughs> strong anti-hero vibe right mm -hmm. But then he does have his moment of redemption at the end of Star Wars. Yeah. For, so this is not going to be a spoiler alert because mm -hmm. I've just assumed. I mean, you have not seen the first three movies. Come on. Yeah. Like you, the only people who haven't seen Star Wars are the people who are in Star Wars, man. <laughs> yes. And that's because they've lived <laughs> the, the Star, Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> that's true. Oh. But but I mean, like that's why I was hesitant to like kind of like mm -hmm. write him in my notes for you know anti-hero because. It's it's not consistent, right? Yeah. Like so, for him being an anti-hero, yeah. If you watched like the first Star Wars movie, or rather Episode Four, New Hope, mm -hmm. you know he is an anti-hero pretty much up until like the last ten minutes of the movie. Yeah. Right. Because he gets mm -hmm. paid for helping save Princess Leia. He does. Leia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, who knows what he does with that money? I don't know. Only assume. Oh, uh, I mean, he was. I'm pretty sure he only takes enough for uh, what uh, food, gas, and tolls. Or or and hear me out buying a new pair of pants with that little you know checker pattern on the side oh, because yeah. they're red at first mm -hmm. but then later on they're yellow yeah but i mean don't you don't you know the difference between the two color things i have no clue oh that really yeah. i know something about star wars that you don't yeah it could be the beer or the pizza we had tonight but oh. yeah i'm clouded right now yeah so the, th the deal is is um like do you remember like the uh like the planetary force or the the federation that he fought with before yeah the whole thing yeah, yeah. remember those guys yeah yeah what's their name I don't know. Oh, crap, I forgot too a little bit. But anyway, um, so basically, um I remember the force though. I remember that I remember not the force. The force, like, not the force. Who he yeah. fought with. Who he yes. fought with, yeah. Yes. But basically, um, the coloring indicated like kind of like your level of skill. Like it means 
like if you if you had the red stripes Got that's it. because you had killed successfully so many people okay. and just like, this guy's a badass you got the red pants yeah but if you got the yellow pants yeah you didn't kill as many of the like the imperial force Wait, um so he starts off with the red stripes on his pants mm-hmm. but then he has the yellow later on see he had both and one of the reasons why he switches is to try and draw less attraction to like his, to his skill from the empire but he still killed people. Oh, he still killed people. But at least yeah. this way, he's not a red pant guy. He's like, okay, so like he's 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 against us. Huh. But at least he's not a red stripe guy because woo, if he's a red stripe guy, we'd come down hard on him. Yeah, but I mean, it's but kind of like in modern society. I mean, if if you know with you know a certain amount of fact that someone's mm-hmm. killed someone, does that make you view them in a more positive light or less positive light? Well, I mean, Jack the Ripper only got five people. And he got he was there's a lot of notoriety. We're still talking about that guy. Um, well, I guess this is a good topic to rope into an anti-hero discussion because we're talking about why someone is is more or lesser based on the amount of people they've killed, their yeah. body count. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting, though. I actually, of all the stuff I've read on Star Wars, I'm surprised I did not know that one. Yeah, I don't know how I know to be honest. Because again, like I, I was, I was the Luke Skywalker guy growing up. Like I was like, oh yeah, laser swords, man. Like that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Which again, like calling it a laser sword, I'm an asshole for doing that because well, the lightsaber is much better. Yeah. Well, to this day, though, mm-hmm. no matter what blade you're handed, whether it's metal, laser, whatever, you just throw it over your shoulder. Oh, you do every time it's presented to you. You can't do that in Star Wars. No, <laughs> it's a bad idea. Yeah, I tried to give you a, a just a plastic knife to cut your food with once, and you threw it over your shoulder. Yeah, I just. Right here. Like, it looks like you can't see it, but it is ridiculous how much you have to bend to do that. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, yeah. yeah. It's a provocative mm-hmm. action you took there. Very weird. Yeah. Um, it, well, you know, for, for Han Solo, though, mm-hmm. like, yeah, he, so he goes from, you know, obviously the the, the plucky mercenary mm-hmm. to, you know, pseudo good guy by yep. the end of Return of the Jedi, right? Mm-hmm. Like, he's made that full transformation. Oh, like, completely. Yep, I'm a freedom fighter now. Mm-hmm. I've got that long flowing jacket. I'm a general. Mm-hmm. You know, like he's 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 fully immersed in it. But oh yeah, he's in the role. But then, then sudden turn, all of a sudden he drops it all. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. Ben Solo. You know he's he he kills some folks and uh, Ben Solo. And, and then Han Solo. He's just he's just right on back on that anti-hero train again. Yeah, he's like, you know what? This kid sucks. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to do my own thing. Yeah, I'm gonna ditch the wife, ditch even the though wife. she's got a stressful job. Yeah, you know, trying to. Need a new rebellion again for some reason for some reason we're we're completely just gonna say you know we we fought to make this new government overthrow the, the evil one but you know what maybe that first evil empire wasn't so bad or maybe uh it was such an emotionally traumatic time that mm-hmm. i'm just going to ignore all yeah. of my responsibilities mm-hmm. and just take off and start screwing over the galaxy one job at a time again oh my gosh yeah just again like i don't know all the decision making for that new trilogy, I just don't don't get not yeah. one bit. Yeah. So yeah, he goes back to being an anti-hero. Um, and who can blame him a little bit for that? Well, at least from a writing standpoint, because we love him more as the anti-hero, didn't we? I guess. I mean, yeah. like when he gave that that amazing line in Empire Strikes Back, when he's about to get frozen in carbonite, mm-hmm. and Leia's all like, I love you. And he's just like, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know, baby. Badass. Yeah. I mean, granted, I, I know what you're thinking. I think we all know like like the story behind oh, that. Yeah, just because looks- yeah, they had to they had to do that scene so many times. Harrison first yeah. got sick of saying I love you. Oh yeah. That he just says I know. Yeah. And like, you know what? That's great. Yeah. We're gonna keep that one. Oh yeah. So because it, it it made like you know, it just reflected the character so well at that point. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I know I think the first time he said by the beard of Zeus, uh, and then he sung Afternoon Delight, the second take. So he did. So they was like, you know what? Like, what? Tone it down. Tone it down a little bit. It and then he they went with Odin's Raven after that. Like, no, 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 no. Still too hot. Too hot. Too hot. Bring it down. <laughs> too spicy. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Harrison. Bring it down. Yeah. You know, I, I I will say that this is obviously a journey for him as a character and an mm-hmm. actor that, you know, spans well over 30 years, 35, 40, I don't know, 30 years. I, I can't do maths right now. I can't know. But it, it also, like, yeah, because of that, it, it's, it's gone on so long that, like, he can get away with shit in real life and we would, it's fine. Like, he could he could crash land a World War II plane yeah. on a golf course, and yeah. we're just like, "That's Han Solo. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, that's he'll nice. just get up and walk out and be like, oh, just playing through.' And we'll be like, 
Yeah. Sure. <laughs> play it where it lands. Yeah, play, play it where it lands. lands. <laughs> I went into this P51. You have to hit it. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my God. Well, you know what? That is a good point, though. Mm-hmm. I-, I would say the most enjoyable aspects of Han Solo were those bits, right? Like, yeah. it-, it was the stuff before he became stereotypical hero. Mm-hmm. Um, so, to that point, yes, I, I-, I do agree with that. Um, but you know what? Let's talk about someone who doesn't quite go through that type of journey. No. Someone who doesn't have a, a reformed transformation, at least not one that we see on screen. No. He, no. because what we actually see is we start with the reformed character yes. who is then forced back into the anti-hero role. And that would be Keanu Reeves as John oh. Wick in the three films that we have so far. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. I just remember this first film coming out and I didn't see it in theaters. No. Um, I, I, I think I, I watched on a DVD release. And I remember seeing it. I remember like I didn't watch it because like, okay, like the last Keanu movie I saw in the theaters was like 47 Ronin. Mm. And I fell asleep twice in it. That's, in yeah. one movie. Yeah. Twice. And I was like, you know what? Like it's a Keanu movie. It's a hit or miss. Like he's a nice guy. Don't get me wrong. Keanu Reeves is a great guy. But like his movie is hit or miss for me. So I rent, yeah. I rent this one. And holy shit it was good like it was so good like everything about this movie was good like it felt like how like you know like in some a lot of cases like you have a role is made in a movie and some's like you know what this is this person like so it's more or less like that role like fits that actor so well so they just go and get that actor and it usually like you can tell like okay like this is clearly this is written for will ferrell this is written for kevin hart this is written for someone along the way dwayne the rock johnson yeah um and then you get this movie and it's pretty much written for keanu reeves is the john wick character is very he's stoic he's very quiet but very focused and very good at what he does um and we see that throughout this whole movie and it just kind of fits Keanu Reeves so so very well and another thing that I remember like really watching this with a with a friend of the uh, for the first time uh well for he saw it for the first time I I, I I convinced him to watch the movie one because one it was just a welcomed like break from the superhero franchise that has been yeah. exploded over the past like decade or so and the build up to John Wick within the first movie yeah. is incredible. Like yeah. the more like you meet new characters, it's basically just to add to this mythos of the of the John Wick character and how much of a badass he used to be. Well, or it's how much of a badass he can be he if can he allows be. himself to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so to your point though of the the early stages of this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he he clearly is reformed because he's gotten out, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. He's finally gotten out. And then uh, he just gets pulled right back in. Yep. It, it's reminiscent mm-hmm. of, um, if you ever watched uh, Road to Perdition, where Tom Hanks plays a hitman who's trying to get out of the mob. I have not seen that one, no. It's a pretty solid movie. We're not mm-hmm. going to get too far into it. But it the, the parallels are very similar, where someone is trying to get clean or you know, they've got this, this tremendously high body count because of their efficiency Mm -hmm. and, and he's trying to, you know, go straight. Well, same thing happens here. You know, uh, Keanu Reeves, John Wick, he's, he's finally heading towards that retirement. He's fought so hard to get, Mm -hmm. you know, calculated such a high body count for, but for him to be so callous towards killing, that's the part of, of this where you, you know, you're, you're kind of mm-hmm. struggling with it the whole movie. It's like you, you, you obviously love the character. Yeah. You love the guy, mm-hmm. you know, even though he doesn't talk a whole lot. No, no. He's very, very, <laughs> quiet. very quiet. He's very, very quiet. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's just a, he's a one man army. Yeah. And, and you want to see what he does next. You do. You just really do. And again, like that really builds the whole antihero thing is you definitely agree that like John Wick deserves revenge for what happened. Yes. And we're not going to give away what happened because like in the event that you have missed these movies, yeah. I absolutely do not want to ruin them for you. Like John Wick, so far, like we said, there are three of them. The first one, I think, is a masterpiece. It is a beautiful cinema. And again, like you figuring out and piecing together a little more of John Wick each each like bit the movie goes on. Yeah. And um, 
each scene you meet someone new, even they don't have to be like big characters. Like one of my favorite scenes in this movie is um, basically you think of like the home invasion sequence. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. his home gets raided. Yeah. And, and the, the cop shows the up. The cop shows up because <laughs> of a noise complaint. And then he, uh, the cop sees um, all the bodies that John Wick has accumulated from the people who broke into his home. Yeah. And he's just like, you, uh, you working again? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right yep have well, a nice night john yeah <laughs> the yeah. cop just goes away yeah. just leaves completely yeah. so it's like oh my god like even like a like a grunt police officer knows oh, the legend yeah. of john wick yeah and just gonna leave him alone so it's just so beautifully done like this in my opinion like the second entry into the series is is the weakest but even in the weakest it's the weakest well if it's the weakest link that chain is still strong it's not breaking on you yeah. it's still a really good movie and then the third just like oh, cranks it up uh to yeah. 11 and to mm-hmm. the point though of the john wick series i mean this isn't a a series where it's like an anthology like mm-hmm. with indiana jones right no, no, no. i mean you could watch any of the i'm not going to say all four of the first three indiana jones mm-hmm. and and it doesn't matter you can watch you any, any order yeah it doesn't can, matter yeah. Mm-hmm. entertaining but john wick does require you to actually watch mm-hmm. those three movies in order if you jump in in two and never saw one mm-hmm. yeah you're screwing yourself over yeah and you're you're doing yourself a disservice because yeah. again one all the movies are great one is the best in the series but it's yeah. not like you know i don't know like i don't know the first album was the best and the rest aren't worth listening to and you're only a real fan if like the first one no 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 the first movie is the best because it just I mean, it sucks you in. It's so good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the rest of the other two are great. And there's a fourth coming out. Oh, yeah. And, and it, what's also exciting is that Keanu Reeves has gone on stage like, hey, if people want to keep seeing these movies, I'll keep making them. So pff, well, bring them on. You, you brought up an interesting point mm-hmm. earlier, though, that I want to absolutely bring into this, because when we have revenge stories, right, mm-hmm. as viewers and, and as fans, we tend to kind of view this as a mathematical operation where if you multiply a negative by a negative, yeah. you get a positive, okay. right? Yeah. And that's kind of what happens here. You have mm-hmm. a guy who indiscriminately kills to satisfy his revenge, mm-hmm. right? And and so because of that, um, in a standard revenge story, if you have a good character who is, you know, obviously the victim of something, mm-hmm. okay, that's like taken, right? Yeah. You've got Liam Neeson kicking ass. You're not questioning any of it because he's getting revenge for his daughter, right? Mm -hmm. But John Wick, you know, his wife has tragically passed away. Yep. And, and, you know, she gets him a puppy, Mm -hmm. right? As a kind of like a parting gift, like, John, don't give up on life. Here's something to love and take care of now that I'm gone sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that negative times negative thing here, I, I really do think is what we need to focus on because, you know, John Wick he he's a he's a good character in the sense that we're presented to him Mm -hmm. as someone who deserved a happy ending based off of the things he's been through Mm -hmm. but he's still done some pretty bad bad shit shit. yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. and then what's also great is like as the series goes on the movies you find out he's really has done some bad shit yeah like he's no angel no no his ledger did did not need to be wiped one not deserve to be wiped clean but yeah no he He's definitely done a lot of bad things, and he was really good at the bad things. Oh, he was, he was, very, very good at the bad things. He was tremendously good at the mm-hmm. bad things. And then in the first movie, again, like like we've said, it's, it's been a revenge story. So, like, you have um, the characters who you know rob John Wick of part of the uh, part of his happiness of this one last semblance of his of his of his wife. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, well, he deserves revenge to get that one person, right? Or yeah. there's like three people. Yeah. Not. 30 people well that, so that's the question right <laughs> he deserves revenge mm-hmm. on the people who came at him right yeah in, in retirement mm-hmm. and and use their position of power to get at him so let's just let's just remove that aspect mm-hmm. of the scenario though okay why do we like john, john wick? wick without the revenge aspect mm-hmm. Without the reasoning for justifying anti-hero behavior, why mm-hmm. do we like John Wick? It's just because of the hot action? I think it's because of the hot action. And the hot action's there, and it's done so well. Like, it doesn't look cheesy or yeah. corny. Or... It's true. He trained, he trained uh, mm-hmm. like, legit military weapon handling mm-hmm. to portray this 
this like you know a grade yeah. uh, assassin mm-hmm. like it's he, not... his weapon handling how he, how he moves in the movie mm-hmm. like it's all designed to make it look like yes this guy is it's legit active, he yeah. double taps almost everything too mm-hmm. like he, he does, does not leave stuff around no. no and like if you compare this to like his other stuff like of course like the matrix like the matrix is, is groundbreaking for its time yeah. it is fun but like again like you could tell like that stuff is fake as shit Wait, the, like, like obviously if you look, it's supposed if you, to look that way if you look at the green screen stuff mm-hmm. how they achieve the bullet time oh my god it's over, hilarious it's it's these dudes in like skin tight green you screen outfits holding like a, green a stick screen boards, and they grab yeah. <laughs> that did not happen in this movie for did not happen no yeah. and then other things too like if you've ever seen the movie equilibrium with oh, yeah. uh yeah. um yeah christian bale christian bale with batman himself yeah yeah like that's like developing martial arts with guns and like it's cool but it's over like it's over the top like it is yeah. just ridiculous looking so like if you think like movies that do like these really great or like gun choreography yeah. but they almost always all look fake this movie isn't bad no, like no. it is really really well done like again like i know we've got one one friend in the military who we watched this with and he's like this is good yeah. like this is like this is tactical this is legitimate like this this makes sense yeah. like it's really really well done yeah and honestly mm-hmm. that's that's kind of where i was with it like i i'm not going to say that i was trying to write an essay or a thesis on this movie <laughs> as i watched it but the mm-hmm. first time i saw it i'm like okay you know what i understand the revenge angle mm-hmm. not a big deal i get that but but i kept asking myself why do i like john wick for reasons that aren't john wicky yeah. right like, <laughs> like john wick wicky yeah, yeah the stuff the stuff that i'm seeing right mm-hmm. now like i want to find out how can i justify liking him yeah um because he's yeah he's got tremendously high body counts Mm -hmm. you know i mean you can't tell me that every single person that dies in an action sequence justifiably needs to go no no and it's not like i don't know like you think like the 80s action movies and you've got like rambo and uh uh i don't know like anything with schwarzenegger and like one bad thing happens like oh no like they kidnap my kid and now i'm going to like basically bring down an entire co- small country's militia yeah. because of it and it's always over the top it's like they're just walking straight forward with like one automatic oh, weapon yeah. and killing yeah. everything like yeah, an m60 in one arm yeah. no like <laughs> he's he's like in the middle of an open field like he should be an easy target big weapon or not yeah um well it re- reminds me of that cut scene from austin powers where they show the guy that dies in, in the steamroller <laughs> and and on the extras for this they showed mm-hmm. like his family and what they went through after austin powers <laughs> kills him and so that's that's kind of what i'm thinking about mm-hmm. here it's like yeah it's like these body counts it's are ridiculously high I mean, yeah should ever is it justifiable i don't know no. some people are crazy with their pets man so they fine. are they really are fine. it is what it is i mean i don't think you think okay so in John Wick, we have a very, very short time with him, him and the puppy. Yeah. Do you think he would have called himself a dog dad? Because we talk about like, you know, people. He was getting there. Pets. He was, he he was getting, getting there. there. Okay. Yeah, he was absolutely was getting, getting there. there. Which, yeah. under, I don't know, understand. But it's like me, like, I'm not, I'm not in that camp. I will refuse to call myself a dog dad. My dog is like my Chewbacca. Mm-hmm. He's my co-pilot. He's my buddy. He's yeah. not my kid. Good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the same point, like, uh, kids are basically dogs that slowly learn how to talk they are mm-hmm. that's the only only differentiating point here yep but you know what i think if i had to call this one as like a head-to-head right like mm-hmm. if we were one of those standard top 10 lists right okay and, and we're not judging nothing, people nothing against the top 10 list top 10 lists are fun yeah, we've made, fun. we've made fun of them a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> but and one but, day we'll make a top 10 of the top 10 times we've made fun of top 10 lists yeah yeah we will we will because there's plenty of examples there mm-hmm. but honestly if i had to pick like between the two of these mm-hmm. and which one was the better anti-hero mm-hmm. i may actually go towards john wick and not yeah, han, han solo. solo okay mm-hmm. like is that is that a hot take i don't think it's i don't i don't know i don't think it's too big a hot take like that's it, i feel like han solo definitely like deserves his place among the anti-heroes is just you know he's fun he's swashbuckling he is not like the classic sword wielding hero he's yeah not the main hero of the story but he is the one that we kind of fell in love with the most mm-hmm. um but john wick like oh, see, like, see this yeah. is where I'm at. Mm-hmm. han solo reminds me of the friend that shows up to the pizza party that didn't pay for the pizza mm-hmm. but you let him do it anyway because you're cool with him and he's charming yeah exactly right yeah but like john wick reminds me of billy zane backing up zoolander <laughs> 
<laughs> he's you a know? cool dude. What, he's a cool dude. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Like you're standing alone. And then all of a sudden he just kind of juts yeah. in and he's sticking his chin up at you. Mm-hmm. And that's John Wick. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's where I am with it. Yeah. And here, here's the thing. Han Solo has to remind you of the he run, the castle run. And like under yes, was a 10 parsecs. He has to tell you. He has to tell you that. Whereas John Wick walks in yeah. and he says nothing. Yeah. But everyone around him is like, that's John fucking Wick. John Wick is is uh, Jack Sparrow. Yeah. You have heard of him. You have him. I don't know. Except he's not the worst assassin <laughs> you've true, ever heard of. He's, he's the best he's, assassin you've ever heard he's of. He's the best assassin who's ever assassinated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of, you know, obviously. Yeah. Etsu 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 yes. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. tell you what, I'm happy we sat down to talk about it because I knew someone was mm-hmm. going to look at this and go, why did you guys miss all of the cinematic yeah. anti-heroes that didn't have mm-hmm. like a literary counterpart, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why we did this. We wanted to give you a little bit more content, obviously. Yep. But we also wanted to expand on this just mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. But also gives us an excuse to once again mm-hmm. mention our biggest week ever coming yep. up in a week from now. Because that Space Cowboy, big anti-hero himself. Oh, one of the mm-hmm. biggest anti-heroes of all time. Good old Mel. Yeah, good old mm-hmm. Malcolm Reynolds. So, folks, once again, we wanted to talk to you about this just so that you're aware of it. We've got three full episodes coming up next week, mm-hmm. and we will be breaking down the Firefly universe with our friend, the Sudden But Inevitable Rewatch podcast, as well as measuring the score and the cheap seat reviews. Mm-hmm. And between all four of our podcasts, we may figure out what that sound was. It was probably something flying off of the ship. <laughs> the primary buffer panel. <laughs> 